everyone. It's Deborah, And uh, like I said, I hadn't done a video in three days. So yes, I'm wearing the same thing I did in my last video and I'm getting ready to run errands. But today we're gonna talk about how I solved a murder. And uh, let me give you some background. I lived in this little town and I had a wonderful, beautiful dress shop named Anita's Boutique. Now, you can probably Google this and find the case. Uh, it was Anita's Boutique in Lively, Virginia. Uh, my husband at the time had decorated it just gorgeous. I bought chandeliers from the Williamsburg Pottery. I had beautiful carpet. I had um, evening gowns. I had clothes for the young girls. I had Missy dresses. I even sold shoes and hats. It was a popular place, a popular venue, let me tell you. Um, so, uh, I then moved near Cocoa Beach in Florida, and I was watching Unsolved Mysteries, and it said, you know, does anybody have any tips about this murder? And I go, oh my God, I already called the cops about this. I was the last person to see this lady. So here, let me backtrack. One day, this lady had come in and said, if I sew some clothes, would you sell it on a consignment? I said, well, let me have a couple sample pieces. I didn't tell her right off, but I could tell she was desperate to make some money and, and uh, make some side money. And usually when women do that, sometimes it's because they know their marriage is going downhill. So, so we developed a friendship. She was a beautiful blonde. She was about my age. And I had a dressing room with a beautiful couch, gorgeous, that the men would sit on while they were waiting for their uh, girlfriends or wives to come out of the dressing room. Well, one day she came in, her face was red. She started crying. Evidently, I have that kind of look of empathy where I care and I did care about her. She sat on my couch and I could not believe what I was about to hear. She said that um, her husband was very angry with her. So angry that she was just not just crying. She was like screaming. She knew she was afraid. She knew something was going to happen. And I go, what brought this on? And she said, he found out that I know that he cheated on his income taxes. So there must have been a side story to that because evidently he was hiding uh, some of his financial issues and it must have been a big deal in their marriage for her to find out that he was, you know, conning the government or something. So it was so bad I went next door to get my husband out of there and he came over to help console her with me. It was that traumatic to all three of us. And uh, she said she was going out that night with him. Now, here's what you girls need to take away from this, or maybe guys. When you know your marriage is rocky and you know that something bad could happen, don't be getting intoxicated because that's when bad things happen. I used to tell my grown children, drunk people get run over because they do. So you make yourself very vulnerable when you are drinking. So on Unsolved Mysteries, <clears throat> her face showed up and evidently she had gotten intoxicated and she'd gotten out of the Jeep. I forget all the details. I could have some of this wrong, so forgive me. But she got out and the husband, the Jeep ran over her. <clears throat> so, I immediately called that county, Lancaster County, and I said to the deputies or the sheriff, I go, listen, I made a statement to you all. I made a statement to you all. Where's that statement? Because the deputy came into my dress shop and took a statement. They lost a statement. I tell you what, there should be some laws saying that when you make a statement to the police, they should have a record of it and you should get a copy. That's the key. Get a copy. So you know you have a case number and a copy. Well, I never got a copy because I thought they were going to do diligence, which they did not. And I said, listen, 
I was the last person to see this because the minute she left my dress shop, she went out on this date and then she ends up dead, laying in a ditch, run over. <clears throat> and they apologized. And then next thing I know, the, the Unsolved Mysteries sent me a plane ticket to Northumberland Courthouse to attend the murder trial. And now, I, now I'm going back like 25, 30 years. I believe he was convicted and I do believe he may have appealed this, but I don't know that part, but you all can check on it. But it was, um, the news people were out there at the Northumberland Courthouse, Northumberland County. And I did get on the stand. And of course, the husband's lawyer was quizzing me saying, you say she was very, very upset and she knew she was gonna be in trouble with her husband. How do you know that? I go, well, listen, I used to be a deputy sheriff and I worked with a lot of females, you know, in the jails and arresting. I know when a woman is upset because I'm a woman. Well, he kind of like, you know, was uh, saying that I had, I had no, I didn't know what a woman would be in that situation. I go, yeah, I know she was upset. She was afraid for her life. Well, so that was um, my story with Unsolved Mysteries. And I really should look this case up and see what happened because she was a beautiful woman. She was very polite, very nice to me. And now she's no longer there. So listen up, people. Be careful who you drink with, okay? Because I have a feeling a lot of people will want to get you drunk on purpose because they have ill intentions, all right? Bye, everyone.